I want to introduce you to Sebastian Gunningham uh, from um, Amazon. And he's here uh, with us to talk about artificial intelligence. And today we're going to talk a little bit about where artificial intelligence is going and what's the impact on us and, our, and the society around us. But first, um, Sebastian, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, everybody an Amazon customer here, I hope. You guys are all awesome. We spend a lot of time trying to make you happy, so hopefully. Uh, um, so I, I'm, um, I've been at Amazon for 10 years. I'm on the executive team. I have a, uh, Jerry's going to point this out, but I have a unique story that uh, I've worked on Jeff, uh, Jeff's team for the last 10 years. Prior to that, I was at Apple, so I, I, was, I worked with Steve Jobs and Tim Cook. And then prior to that, I was 13 years at Oracle, and I spent 13 years with Larry Ellison. So I've had, a, I've had the benefit of having the exposure to some of the uh, great leaders and great thinkers of the, of the last 30 years, I guess. And yeah. so, Tell um, us about that for a second. It's, not many people have worked with Larry Ellison and Steve Jobs and Jeff Bezos. What, what is unique about those people? Well, obviously, they're all fantastic leaders. I think the one, as you sit in meetings uh, and you know discuss problems, I think the one thing that's common, uh, certainly for me among all three, is their ability to to connect dots that are, that normal that no, us normal people don't see. Most of us think quite linearly, uh, but you're in meetings with uh, with people like Jeff, and he will, you know you'll be talking, and you connect two dots. And uh, you'll say, well, why didn't I think of that? It was like such a simple connection. And their minds are constantly thinking in a nonlinear way, which is what generates all this disruption. It's, kind of, kind of, it's a very free way to think. Yeah. And most of us, the natural way, we, we kind of learn in sequence. We think in sequence. Uh, and some of these great leaders disrupt that by just, uh, you know, they're, they're going off the charts and out of the boxes. They connect two dots. When did you, you know, we should probably buy Whole Foods. You yeah. know, things that, are, things that are just kind of not on the natural stream of thinking. Right, right. Well, those three people had unique visions in the world and have uh, impacted uh, not only the late 20th century, but they're the icons of the 21st century. Yes. And um, in some ways, it seems that uh, the advent of the iPhone had a lot to do with bringing artificial intelligence directly to consumers. Because now they have a digital assistant through Siri or they have a digital assistant through Google. And... That's impacting them. And then I suppose the Alexa, the Echo, is also a result of the smartphone. Yeah, the, uh, artificial intelligence was, was born, the field was born from the premise that you could so precisely map human intelligence that you could get a computer to simulate it. This is like 60, 70 years ago. So, you know, and, and that theory is going to go on for many years, which means anybody can take human intelligence and map it very precisely. Of course, that's very hard to do, and we're probably I think, thousands of years from actually being able to map a human brain. But, um, but uh, in the field that we talk, we mostly talk in, in the terms of machine learning, because one of the techniques of artificial intelligence that's got a lot of energy in the last 10 years is machine learning. And beneath these phones, everybody, uh, all of you in every day, whether you're doing a search, whether you're taking, I mean, most cars have stuff also now, whether you're you know, reading your email and the spams being taken across, all of you are getting exposed to, um, to machine learning as one of the very uh, strong techniques of, of AI. And I, think you, I honestly think you can't understa understate the impact mm. this is going to have over the next 50 years. This is a, it's an explosion uh, like electricity, like oil, uh, and you know, this availability of data is, is going to touch us all and make our, I think, make our lives better. We can, we can talk about that. Well, machine learning, I mean, we've opened the door, but we're likely to have the rest of human existence will be dealing with machine learning. Yes. Uh, without question. Without we, question. We, we've embarked on the era. We're in the first inning of machine learning. But when did it begin at Amazon? Well, we've, uh, you know, since the very beginning, uh, and, and I, one of the things that I run at Amazon is, is uh, the, f the fraud piece. And so we've been using machine learning to detect fraud for 10 years now. But the energy, the energy around uh, uh, machine learning that you see today in the market is, can date back to a, a competition in 2012 called ImageNet. And the idea there was try to try and, um, uh, you know, humans can recognize image images are about 95% accuracy. So if I put an image in front of you, 95% chance you're going to get the image right. 
And computers at that point were still at about 75%. So we, the, the, the internet launched a, a, a competition, and lo and behold, uh, in, you know, in 2012, uh, computers got to 85%, the, a year later they got to 90%, and today computers are at 97%. So today, the state of the art in image recognition, we've proven that machines can do it more accurately than humans. And then you, go, you start to go down the line, because the machines are learning how to do voice more accurately than humans. Uh, you know, take the idea of, of recognizing moles. You know, if, you take a, if, if you take a picture of a mole on your body, today the computer can be more precise than your skin doctor at predicting whether that's a good or a bad ball and what you should do about it. And so, so now there's a complete explosion. Once you get to that point, there's an explosion of ideas mm. as to what the machines could do better. It's a narrow field. It can't do a lot of things, yeah. you know. Ray Kurzweil, the, uh, the uh, famous author, and um, he's an engineer, engineering leader at Google at yeah. Alphabet. He said that in 2029, uh, machines would be smarter than humans. Yeah. Do you think that's possible? No. That's, uh, this is, uh, it, you know, uh, neurologists and psychologists and sociologists have been working very hard to understand the human brain, and we're very far away from understanding the human brain. So the idea that we're going to create this superhuman bot that will have so much, so much power that it's going to challenge us as humans on Earth mm. uh, is, I think, I'll, yeah, I would never say never, but it's a long, long way away. So, what, what, you know, one should be prepared to discuss it, but the, the machine learning and, human, and machine intelligence is actually a very narrow field that I view as just complementing a lot of stuff that humans do today. Um, you know, and, and there are a lot of, I mean, it's, it's, it's a very good idea to have a machine drive a car better than us, but it's not so good an idea to have a car that decides where it wants to go. So there are, you know, there are, this would be a very tricky world if, uh, if yeah. cars were made, and we're many, many, many years away from a car deciding where it wants to go. So what is it that <laughs> machines can learn today? Well, I think it's, a, it's very narrow to places where there's a lot of data. You know, machines are competing. Humans are, we're an incredibly efficient machine. We don't have to drive a million miles to learn how to drive. Right. right. The machine has to drive a million miles to learn how to drive. Mm -hmm. You know, we use, I think, if you, I think it's been said that it, when we make a decision, we use 50 watts. We're right. highly efficient. Mm -hmm. A machine to make a decision mm -hmm. needs a massive amount of power. Right. And so... Uh, what the machine can do is very narrow to the data that's available, the computing power that you can put on that, uh, and you know, and the kind of the nature of, of the problems. And so, there are many there are many jobs which are you know just like just like happened when we went from, you know, from from uh, the, the the sewing machines from the textile into the sewing machines or or when the PC came about and Excel came about and the spreadsheets, right. most of them just complemented stuff that we were doing and did it better. And the economic reaction to automation is just more stuff that, you know, when the, when, when the, the, the cloth was made by machines, the cloth became cheaper, more people bought more clothes, and the whole thing just grew. Mm. And, and that's the way automation went. So, so the machine learning is, is narrow but growing. Uh, I think artificial intelligence, those two words, I think is a long way away. So we have, to, we have to be aware of it, but so today we great, they, great, great grandkids that will yeah. maybe have to deal with that. <laughs> so uh, in terms of sort of where we are today, are the machines, have they learned to see yet? Uh, the machines uh, have learned to recognize. I don't think they, mm. you know, we have these, um, we, we, as we've said, we're doing drones at Amazon and, and um, the, you know, the drones are a pretty good idea, but you've got to teach these drones not to run into each other, not to run into people, not to kill a, not to kill a dog when it's landing to deliver the package. And so, so you, can, you can train, with data, you can train algorithms to learn what a dog looks like, what not to do when there's a dog present. Mm -hmm. And so, but it's a far cry from the fluidity of judgment that a brain really has. Mm -hmm. So within the bounds, you can teach the machine to do um, What is training? Is training just cycles of processing it's it's watching it's just watching information mm. and 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 seeing what that information look you know in I'll come back to the fraud idea we we watch every transaction at amazon you just watch and you know after the fact which ones were a problem 
And so mm -hmm. the machine remembers that. Our brains aren't very good at remembering that stuff. Mm -hmm. And they remember that at vast amounts of data. And when they remember that, they, when they see something similar, they say, aha, this has a high probability of being a fraud transaction. Why? Because it's this time of day, it's this kind of credit card, it's this kind of product, mm -hmm. it's this kind of machine, the order is coming from this city. And so this vast amount of data can be crunched, and the machine just watches. Wow. processes it, these, the, the, these very elegant algorithms have been developed to capture that information, and then the next time a transaction comes through, the machine has a, just this vast amount of history that, you know, our brains are hard to keep up with this kind of stuff, and then can decide whether that's going to be good or bad. And it's the same for recognizing, you know, a cat in a photo. You just, you just show a machine millions of photos of cats. <laughs> yeah, right. And then you put another photo in, and the machine has a pretty good chance. I think that's a cat. <laughs> they've, they've, they've learned the, what's in those bits. Right, right. I, I think I was uh, at a, another conversation where someone was saying, gee, if you brought someone from the 1950s and showed them one of these smartphones, and, and, and they said, well, what do you do with it? And he said, well, most of us watch cat videos and have arguments with strangers over the internet. <laughs> but that's really, unfortunately, what a lot of people do with these things. How important is, is artificial intelligence with, to these devices it's, today? It's going, to be, uh, it's going to be everywhere. I mean, it's, you know, if you look at it as things um, that it can do better than humans, mm -hmm. in, in the end, it's going to improve. You know, as, I, as I said, if you're a radi radiologist and you're looking at MRIs all day long trying to find a, a, you know, a cancer, Today it's proven the machines can do that much more accurately than the human. So radiologists, pathologists. Fa fa yeah, much faster, much more precise. Uh, you know, the, there's this wonderful example of um, real-time translation. Uh, Google's already out there with uh, real-time translation means that the, I talk and in a nanosecond after I've said something, the machine is translated to whatever language. Imagine that. That means you're, you're done needing to learn French at school. Yeah, yeah. Because you know, you t real time translation can be available all over the internet. You can bring millions of people who don't know English onto the internet. Yeah. Uh, it could change. It could you know, uh, it could make ac accessible everything in country A and country B. It's a very very powerful idea, and and you can bring that on the phone mm. uh, at very high speeds. And you could. And not only that, I was as I was saying earlier, the thing about uh, uh, machine learning is that it learns. So the translation this morning is better than the translation last night. Because the nature of these algorithms is you feed them in and you see the errors. Mm. And so you're just going to get to a point where it will be, we'll just, we can just have this interactive conversation in a third language. So we're really the dropping world. the barriers between human beings. Artificial intelligence Completely. has the ability to connect people in real time from different languages about ideas. About ideas and, and uh, make it instantly available. Yeah. So that could Very make powerful. the potential powerful, uh, more powerful, the connection between all of us. And we're entering a phase where um, most of the, I mean, I think there's over, over 2 billion people, almost 3 billion people now have smartphones. And that still, that still leaves about 4 billion out, though. Right. So we're almost half. Yeah, we're almost half. We're almost half. But it's probably the next decade we're going to yeah. get uh, you know, fully connected, each one of us to each other. And translation yeah. will be key. Yeah, it will be. It'll be machine a... learning will be one, a key enabler to make that useful. It is, you know, the... the um... There is a huge disruption, and there's a huge dislocation going on because, you know, yeah, so I read a figure that says that 40% of all U.S. jobs could potentially be automated with some of these techniques that machines are doing. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, over the long time, it's well proven that technology creates more jobs than it destroys. Right. And because uh, there's an economic reaction, you know, when bank, when bank uh, teller, the, the, what are those machines where you take money out of the bank? bank uh, the ATM. ATMs. The ATM. Yeah, the ATM said that was the end of bank. Well, it, it ends up that the ATMs lowered the cost for banks. Banks opened more uh, branches. Uh, branches. And yeah. so there's an economic reaction to that kind of efficiency. It's going to happen here also. But in the meantime, the, the AI is, or our machine learning is, is, is going to cause trillions of dollars of dislocation. There's a massive dislocation. It's going to yeah, happen. My understanding. And the, and the only difference from the past is that this is happening at 10x the speed. Right. So for all, everybody, all of us here, 
you owe it to yourself to understand exactly what the impact is going to be because it's going to affect all your decisions of, of how you're going to work, what you should educate yourself on, what you should know because the dislocation is coming and it's coming fast. I think that I think I read that uh, the impact is somewhere between 19 trillion and 33 trillion by 2025. According to Bank of America, from some of these automation, from, from machines. automation, that's the impact. Yeah, and it's not you know it's not white collar, blue collar. It's it's uh, as, as I've looked at these uh, jobs, it's it's mostly repetitive jobs. So in the example of the radiologist, there's a very good chance that the radiologist's job is going to go away because the machines will do it better. But his assistant, <laughs> yeah. who has a much more varied and dynamic job, yeah. is not going away. So if you want to pass, what, what jobs you should be worried about are all the things that are repetitive in nature, right. you know, cashiers, all the stuff that you can really do better with a machine. Right? What's some of your favorite examples of machine learning at Amazon? Uh, well, one of my favorite is, uh, anybody here Fresh customer? Fresh is we deliver food. We deliver food and uh, awesome. Uh, and we have a very high bar. Uh, the fresh is, we do this early morning delivery of your bananas and your strawberries. Yeah. So I went to one of the fulfillment centers, uh, which is these places where we process the food every morning. So I was there early in the morning. And I was with a scientist next to me. Uh, at Amazon, most of us just walk around with scientists because there's so much opportunity to do what we're doing now differently with machines that we just, we, we just don't go to meetings without scientists next to us, right? Right. And so there was this person inspecting every strawberry, because that's what they do in the morning. So the strawberry's coming down the conveyor belt, and this person, and this person was an expert in fruit. He could look at a banana and say, that banana's going to have a black spot within six hours. Or this banana's going to last. And he's one of these produce experts. Right. And so the scientist next to me was saying, aha, I could start to take pictures of everything, and I could train a machine yeah. to uh, learn you know, how to grade produce and we were doing apples and bananas and you know a, a year later we've now launched in our fulfillment centers a machine that that, that can detect it's got a spectral camera and looks at every strawberry and picks out the ones that aren't good so and so at scale we're doing this for not only that the machines we suddenly discovered the machines were telling us that a one percent variation in the color of the strawberry has a dramatic impact on the sweetness and most of the human eyes can't see that variation. Wow. So now suddenly you've got a process where this machine is looking at every strawberry coming down the conveyor belt. It's like it's sweet, not so sweet. This one's going to last one day, two days, one hour. Then we're putting bananas. And so it's just it's a very simple example of a very manual process of this you know expert in produce, which is not scalable by the way, because you're very hard to find those people. Right. Replaced by a machine that we trained with everything. He he labeled everything. We took thousands of pictures. He said, this is good. We taught the machine what he knew. And uh, now we've deployed it all over the so world. So the machines are great at highly specialized tasks. At highly specialized tasks. Not task. generalized tasks. Yes. So general, uh, general, yeah, general intelligence is a long, that's a long road still. But you know, uh, paralegals have to, have in the past had to analyze documents. Today they're putting all these documents into machine learning and the machine can pick out themes and and motivations and people. Mm -hmm. And so you say, well, all the paralegals are going away. Well, no, what's happening is now judges are asking for much more do documentation than they did in the past because they can get it in three seconds. So the reaction is that mm -hmm. as the machines get better at doing specialized tasks, then people get to do more right. variety with them. I think you mentioned before that um, last night about a company that's figured out there's about 3,000 body types. And yeah. tell me about this, about this uh, machine that well, they Well, this, this is early because clothes are, you know, the, 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 the clothes are built with uh, not very precisely, let's put it that way. And yeah. If you've ever seen a shirt being Large, designed. medium, small, <laughs> extra small. And uh, it turns out that our bodies actually could do with some more precision. Um, and so there's a lot of techniques, and I've seen some, uh, some machinery where, where they've, teach, they've taught machines uh, you know, thousands of different body types. Mm -hmm. And then the, 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 the sister idea to that is, can you develop a process to build clothes real time that's very precise to that body type? And it's, it's, you know, it's a complicated thing to do at scale, but I predict that over the next five or 10 years, you'll be custom ordering clothes to whatever body type you have. Or you can even, you know, you'll have devices in your home 
uh, that can actually do this and predict this, right? Does this machine have predictive capabilities? Well, the uh, predictives are very annoying because it will predict if you put on weight or lose weight, and so you can kind of start to change. You can, you can teach a machine what body types are going to look like uh, right. over time, but it, um, uh, you know, maybe we'll design clothes that can move with our body type. I over suggest time. don't advertise that. <laughs> you <know, laughs> if you buy those clothes, you're going to have a different. Yeah, you're going to have a thing. But it's, you know, th these are, and these are all new, fun ideas. Uh, but behind the scenes, there's an enormous amount of stuff going on with this data, yeah. yeah. So what is the craziest idea that you've heard about as it relates to artificial intelligence? I, um, I recently read a book that I recommend to everybody. It's called The Master Algorithm. It was written by Pedro Domingo, who's, uh, who's a, a, a very well-known researcher. And he presented the idea that, think if I could, if I could get all the data that you've generated uh, about yourself since you were born. Every email, every place you've been on your phone, uh, every purchase, every vacation, you know, it, it, um, every doctor's visit, every piece of speech. Uh, fortunately, that's very unlikely to happen because I don't think there's any entity in the world that has that data. But suppose that I had a machine that looked at all of that and I created uh, your digital half. That that machine would be a pretty accurate picture of you. I mean, it wouldn't know why you made some decisions, but we would then have this 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 bot right. that you could send robot, out. Robot bot. Yeah, yeah a bot you, could, that you could carry in your pocket as a little chip, and you could send it out in the world to do stuff for you. Right. Like, I could send my bot to meet your bot and say, you know, can you ask Jerry what questions he's going to ask me tomorrow? And then I'd send him to go, go file my taxes, go, you know, find the best hotel, you know, scan through a million LinkedIn job applications. So that, that's the crazy, and it's, that, it's that the future mini is, me it's the mini me right. that, you, that you would train, and it would go, you know, send it out on dates, you know, so go, go and interview <laughs> a thousand uh, candidates for a date and meet the other bots, and you could, you could save a lot of time with, with some of this kind of stuff, right? And it, th that future is not that far away. I mean, the, the data that's being collected is, is, is out there, but it's not, uh, but you could, I mean, just think of all, I was joking the idea about, um, you know, you book a hotel room and it says ocean view and then you arrive at the hotel and it's got this little narrow view of the ocean. <laughs> if you lean over the balcony, you can yeah. see the ocean. And so, but all this stuff is available now to know. Right. And so you can send your bot out and say, find me the hotel that really has an ocean is, view. Is Amazon doing that now with drones well, and things? We're not, uh, we're not so interested in personal information. We, we obviously focus on shopping. Yeah. And... Um, it's, you know, we're very transparent. When you come to Amazon, it says, hello, Jerry. So that's a way of us saying, we're watching you. Right. We, we know what you've bought. We, we say, that, you know, you can go check your browsing history. Mm. There's, there's, a, there's a handshake here between what information we're using to help you and help you predict with how we share it with you. This is very important. How do you because, know it's me? Uh, well, my password that tells you it's me? You know, there's a lot of stuff. When you, your, fin your digital fingerprint on the internet is enormous, which is, I know where your IP is, I know where you're coming from, yeah. and all kinds of stuff. I mean, anonymously, so I can, I can predict pretty accurately that it's you. Passwords help, of course, but passwords are kind of, uh, kind of dumb. But there's many things that you do on the computer, the, the buttons you click, you do the same ones every day, you, you probably go to the same areas in the site. I mean, you can... You can, you, you can teach machines to really be, to identify you and protect you. Can that same capability that identifies me help Amazon with its own, protect itself from cyber attacks and cyber threats? Yeah, I mean, you know, the, 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 machi the machines that attack, usually these, all these cyber attacks are done by machines, not people. Yeah. So the machines, are, the machines are much harder to detect. So it's a machine going against a machine. By the way, the field of artificial intelligence and machine learning, there's a lot of new techniques where people are having algorithms that, that challenge other algorithms. So there's, because you- the, the war of algorithms. The war of algorithms to see who breaks and what breaks and what are the use cases. Yeah. And so in, in these cyber attacks, which is you know, also a very dynamic field, uh, it's mostly machine to machines going at each other. And it, it's, you know, it's a race it's a race to see who's that. You, you have to be one second ahead of right. whatever machine is coming well, at There's you. a lot of corporate espionage. We've noticed that in the last decade. A lot of this is state-sponsored. Mm -hmm. uh, it's almost like 
going back to the 17th century where England and France and Spain each gave money, those kingdoms gave money to pirates and let the pirates yeah. operate from their territories to attack the other people. This seems what's going on in Russia today and China today where these states are actively sponsoring these terrorists and, and also the, the actual cyber attacks that's happening, the cyber yeah. pirates doing the ransomware. How does Amazon protect, protect me well, from, it, from the, these things? The, there's different motive. Like the money motivation is we have to protect people that are trying to steal your money. Then there's the IP motivation, which is yeah. you know, different entities coming in and trying to steal what you've invented. Uh, you have this, these terrorist motivations. You have so the, all these different motivations of different angles of attack. From, from what you're concerned at Amazon uh, is me protecting that nobody's stealing your identity, your credit cards, and your money. Exactly. And that's, that's actually one of the easier ones to do. Because you can, you, at some point, you know, even if you're buying a book on a Kindle, I, I have about three or four seconds to make a decision whether it's a good... Uh, good, you or know, good or bad. But this you know, is your brand. Your brand experience yeah. is based on keeping me safe. And keeping me safe. And, you know, and of course, if we mess it up, we'll, we'll certainly uh, you know, give you your money back and protect you. Yeah. All the other type of cyber war, that's, that's much more complicated because that comes in different forms because that could be, mm. you know, the chances are that if you have a corporation and somebody's stealing IP, it's a very good chance that somebody inside it's got access to all the networks. So it's, you know, it's much more complex. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's coming, somebody from, coming from outside. So we, all, we all have computers in every part of the planet at this point. So Yeah, yeah. Uh, in terms and of protecting Amazon's, I mean, IP, you've got to be one of the big targets, right? Amazon is an important company. We are. We are. But, you know, the, the, I think also as you think about this, uh, um, especially a place like Amazon, IP is one component. The operational excellence, the mach you know, all the machine, the people, the culture. In the end, if you're if if stealing your IP is, in my view, if stealing your IP is the high risk of your company, you really haven't built out right. the real value of the company, which is all the execution, the customer experience, the detail. Mm -hmm. You know, if your if your IP, if you, if your if your bottleneck or your your single threaded failure is the ownership of your IP, mm -hmm. you probably haven't built enough moats. So you personally recruit a lot of these PhDs to I come do. to the company. What, what's that like? And these people have strange ideas about what they want to do with AI. I mean, how they do, do you a lot. Of, lot of acad a lot of you know. In this, it's, we are in the Renaissance stage of machine learning and AI. I mean, this is the it's the golden age right now. So many of these folks have spent many years in academia, and suddenly um, they see the possibility with people like Amazon and, and Google and others. Uh, where all this data and this p processing power is available to invent stuff that customers use. So there is, um, f right or wrong, there is this move from academia into business right. because all these great researchers say, oh my goodness, I can take these algorithms I've been working on and I can make customer reviews better and I can make the shopping experience better. I can predict stuff. I can, and, uh, you know, I can recognize images. I can, I can fix strawberries, right? I can, mm. well, and, I and, and, and that crowd is... And so they're, they arrive, they're like kids in a candy store. They arrive at these companies with a lot of data. Definitely. They've been working, and they're, they're like, oh my goodness, this isn't. So they're having a blast also, yeah. Right. I noticed on Amazon that you know, any, de any software developer can go to the site and use the AI algorithms that they have and be able to, if they have enough of data themselves, yeah. Yeah. then they can start doing their own work. Yeah. Is, is Amazon, I mean, is active in sort of democratizing AI yes. for average yeah. people out there? Yeah, Jeff has talked about this a lot. He is, very, he is very excited about, obviously, we use a lot of machine learning ourselves for our business, but he's very excited about democratizing this here because, uh, you know, just like he, he's trying to democratize access to space, he believes that if the, when he, when he put Amazon together, he didn't have to invent a payment system. He didn't have to invent a logistics system. They were there. Yeah. You know, the internet was already there. So, it, and, and that just generated this wave of entrepreneurs on top of that infrastructure, Amazon being one of them. Right. And the same's gonna happen with AI, but it's gotta, you gotta have access to this stuff. You gotta have, you know, there's gotta be a very low barrier of entry. People, you need to democratize the data, the access to the algorithms. And with Amazon Web Services, uh, we're, we're very focused in trying to make this available to everybody, because we think it's just gonna generate a wave of innovation in all areas, of, you know. That, that, I, I, I'll just give you, an, there was another one I saw, an anecdote the other day, I saw an insurance company 
uh, is now doing machine learning based on taking pictures of thousands of the roofs of buildings. And the machines can now predict when that roof is going to have a hole or a leak <laughs> or get old or need to be replaced. Yeah. And therefore, they can adjust all their pricing just based on just enter, the machine runs, that building is going to collapse in five years, change the premiums. You, you see what I'm saying? So, so there's just these multiple use cases that people are going to come up with all the time. You know, that's interesting because you know, a lot of corporate research is behind the firewall, it's deeply guarded, whether it's IBM or Microsoft. The corporate research, what they're doing, they keep that stuff secret, Apple. But yeah. the exception is artificial intelligence because it comes out of academia, which is naturally an open yeah. environment. And so, and openness seems to drive the, 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 the research forward. Yeah. It's the openness about it that keeps the innovation and, going. And the algorithms themselves have all been made open source, which is very unique in history of, of mm. invention. You like know, TensorFlow. Like and Tensor, these very, they're very elegant, you know, being worked over many years, you know, they summarize a lot of, process, a lot of uh, decision making. And they're available to all the public. Now, it's still complicated. You have to go to the high priesthood of scientists <laughs> to do stuff. Right. But that will change. We will make it available to everybody. It will be simplified. And in every aspect of your life, of government, of business, of data processing, people will have access to techniques to do things better. How does Amazon decide to apply machine learning to a process? I mean, is it something that started a decade ago or longer? Yeah, it's, 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 uh, it's, it's uh, one of the, I think, uh, Un unspoken uh, things about Amazon. So a lot of the great, there, there is a very strong tech DNA. Yeah. It, it, and this was, even for the first years of the company, Amazon was selling books. Uh, the untold story was the behind the scenes. It was a highly technical company. Mm. Jeff has a very strong tech DNA. Mm. Uh, and uh, the world saw us just as a bookseller, and then we were selling cameras. And, right. But behind the scenes, what, was, what, what one didn't appreciate was this, this massive infrastructure. We viewed every problem as a, what can machine do? I mean, you know, we, there's no extra points for more people on, the, on, on an internet business. And right. so we were viewing everything about how we can make decision-making better through machines, and that led to all kinds of stuff. And, uh, and so today, I, I don't think there's a single meeting I go to at Amazon where there's not technical teams saying, how can we do this technically? I mean, right. you know, there, there are still things, whether it be pricing, forecasting. Is an Echo part of that meeting? Are you at, talking to Echo in the meeting? Not yet, <laughs> but I've heard, I've heard some ideas where people are saying, you know, Echo, give me, a, you know, predict a forecast of sales for the next. And, and I understand some companies are trying to do stuff like that, but. Um, Echo is, uh, Echo, I hope you're all testing. We just released one with a screen, which is super cool. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, you know, Echo has, we have a lot of ideas for Echo. It's going to learn a lot about what's around you and help Can you, you out. Can you guys look back at a couple quarters and say, hey, what went wrong? Yes. Because you can, you can map data, you know, you can put weather data. You can put, oh, you know, right. you so can say this, this highway has construction, therefore the trucks can't go through. You can put so much data mm. for the machine to crunch that so you can get very accurate to what historically were pretty dumb forecasts. You'd say, okay, this is, I have, I'm selling these glasses, uh, this is the amount that are gonna be sold. Right, and, right, right. But now your machines can crunch this mass, and th these are non-linear things, which is, Stuff that is that no that you naturally would say well those two things aren't connected why is it if the highway 90 has a you know a pothole in it how does that affect my forecast it says well it has nothing to do with my forecast well it turns out machine tees out very odd things that are related oh interesting that, that us our linear thinking doesn't quite figure it out this is what's called deep learning and the the great aha of deep learning is that it's time to connect dots that. We, we just don't connect I've at seen scale. Statistics in, in, in terms of retail sales, the weather has a lot to do with it. Weather patterns. Warm. It, well, in the, in the big picture, in the overall picture, yes, the warm and the. And the but, cool, yeah. but you're always late because you can't really predict the weather, right? So if it, you know, if it starts snowing today in Aspen, everybody's doesn't nobody's carrying winter clothes right now, right? So, right, right, so, right, 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 right. So it's it's kind of late to do that, but. But you, you know, the, the prediction capabilities give you a lot of, lot of uh, heads up. Should we expect Amazon to be a smarter company in the future? Um, yeah, I mean, we, we view the world in terms of, uh, of how we can make it awesome for the customers. So, you know, the Jeff likes to say that uh, invention is, is only invention if customers love it. 
And yeah. he always jokes that we've invented a lot of stuff that customers hate. So, yeah. you know, so the, the measure, the way we go about every day at work is, is saying, is this something that the customer thinks is great? And right. if it's not, you know, and, and a lot of it has to do with the, with the ability to crunch information and learn. And Echo, Echo, is, Echo is one of the more visible ones because you, you, you just have this enormous explosion in the ability to understand stuff through language. And there are just so many use cases to be able to be doing with, with yeah. words. Gar Garmin I mean, phones, these small screens are still kind of complicated. It's a, mm -hmm. You have to type. and we haven't resol I think there's a lot of invention on these small screens still left to do. Right. I mean, it's a wonderful device, but, you know. Well, it, uh, a, 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 a Gardner had a statistic that by 2018, 85% of all customer interactions are going to be uh, mediated by some sort of bot or, or be my bot talking to your bot. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, I think, you know, a lot of stuff that we do is repetitive and boring. Paying taxes, you know, signing up for insurance for your car. But it'd be a great thing to say, hey, I mean, let the bot take the complaint. Right? Yeah, I mean, even picking a movie at night is complicated. You know, you make the wrong decision. <laughs> you can have machines do all kinds of a lot of hard work for you. You know, I mean, it's, it's, just think of all the repetitive things you have to do. You have to pay some bills at the end of the month and, you know, do your license expert. I mean, all this stuff can be pushed over to your bot right. and you can send them out into the world and you can just have a much better time and drink yeah. some wine at home and have if, much more free time. And but if my bot is learning for me, what am I doing to learn, right? I mean, am I getting... Well, I, you know, I have great optimism that humans are a very curious bunch mm. and we will find all kinds of new things to do. There's not, there's one thing about our species that, I, that one mustn't worry about that we're going to run out of things to do because we will, we, I mean, just go back two, three hundred years. Right. You know, they weren't, you know, video programmers didn't exist, uh, masseuses didn't exist. I mean, you, you can go down the list of an enormous amount of things that we will come up with to do right. that will satisfy us and make our lives better. So, what's the next innovation? You mentioned 2012, there was a period of innovation yeah. in artificial intelligence. Where are we now, and what's the next sort of leap that we can expect in the next couple of years? I don't know. It's a good, it's a good question. I mean, you're seeing a, a, the, an area that's very interesting is the area of robotics, right? Because right. Uh, robotics is a, is a type of learning in, in machine learning, which is called reinforced learning, which is a combination of, of, of teaching, you know, using data to teach machines to do stuff. And... Um, you know, you will have little robots coming up to your house to deliver stuff. Uh, right. You will have drones. Uh, so I think that that area, um, you know, and I've seen a lot of that. I, I believe there's a robot that's being shown here at 1 o'clock yeah. that you guys should all go see. Uh, uh, I don't know the details, but, you know, generating music. And uh, I think the, the area around what we historically call robotics, but all these machines that can do stuff for us is super, super. If you go to our fulfillment centers, um, these places used to be a, a beehive of people. Mm. We have machines doing almost, we have machines doing picking. We have machines that are getting finger tippy. They will know something soft and hard. They just pick and put in box. And this, it's, an, it's an awesome set of invention that's going mm. on across the whole industry. Well, obviously, the more visible self-driving cars, mm. you know, self-driving planes. I mean, all this stuff. That I, think, I think we're just at, the, this is the very early eight, uh, stages of that Right, right. Well, I know my father-in-law recently had surgery and had a robot do the surgery. Really? Yeah, robot surgery, uh, robotics. We didn't actually did the actual cutting, and, and, that's, and that's a new way of doing... Right. Surgery. Well, I, I think I trust her, you know, because a, a, a neurologist is basically, he's, it's a carpenter with a very precise set of hands. Right, right, right. But it's still human, right? And, you know... The, the humans are directing the machines, but the humans are, the directing machines are doing the work. work. And so the question becomes... You think we might be seeing robots into our lives? A little I more. think so. And people have robot uh, vacuum cleaners now that are moving around. I think it's going to be all over your, your daily life doing stuff. Yeah. Are you going to be selling these robots? Uh, well, you know, we're leaning into, we have this little first little, I mean, Echo is a little robot in its way. It doesn't move yet, but right, right. You know, maybe we'll put legs on it one day and it's... Uh, it, <laughs> what's what's Alexa, Echo's ab ability to learn who I am? Um, in getting better all the time. You know, I'm not sure we recognize your voice yet, but yeah. voice is a very unique, there's about a thousand different variations of how you can take, you know, from your jaw, your actual tone of your voice, 
that a machine could actually break down. So, but uh, I think I think that all these devices will learn to the extent that you want them to learn, and we're transparent about it. We'll probably start to learn, you know, who your dog is, what the pitter patter of your dog at home is, mm. your voice, your footsteps. You know, when it rains outside. I mean, how these... about my mood? Will we will read my mood? I'm happy mood. I'm I don't know. Mood. That seems a. That's a. I, I, I was. I was. Smell is unresolved. I think there's been very a right. lot of digital noses have been built, but that's a hard one to crack. We, oh, yeah. we can, and taste is the machines have not learned taste yet. Right. That's a, and uh, your mood, I think, is yet the next. I mean, maybe Alexa should have a mood as opposed to you having a mood. So. <laughs> well, let's hope it's a good mood. Right? Yeah, let's hope it's, it's a good mood. It's going to cost you a lot of money. Right. An annoyed Alexa may not be a good thing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, what is the scariest thing about artificial intelligence? Um, I think, you know, obviously the, the, some of the, the concerns out there is that the, the, we would create a superhuman entity that conflicts with our interests, uh, whatever that may be. Right. I think that's many, many years. I think, you know, like all these things, it, it, this, this stuff can be weaponized and in the wrong hands, just like any army or, right. uh, you know, I think this should, we, should, we, should, it should be, we should be very clear and transparent. I think it should be audited and inspected. Uh, and so I think it's a few, as a new field, it, it, it's, it's pretty much the Wild West right now. But in the wrong hands, this is, this is tricky stuff. And then the, the, the final thing is, is the dislocation. You know, the, the, the millions of people, I mean, if you think it's gonna be hard in America, imagine all the worlds, the worlds that are less technologically advanced, where all this technology is suddenly gonna jump in there. And that dislocation could be very, very large. I think that's, a, that's something that as a society, we need to figure out how we're gonna buy the time. Because we're generating enough wealth to, to have everybody's standard of living go up. Right. We can debate where that wealth is going, maybe you know, too concentrated. But uh, the dislocation among uh, of all these jobs that people are doing today that are not going to be there in the future is happening very fast. And that, that, you know, that could have repercussions. Right. I mean, if you think about the kids growing up today, I mean, they could be in a world where they don't ever drive a car. Yep. They could be in also, a world. I hate driving. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm signed up for that one. You're signed up. No more driving. I, there's no value added in driving. Yeah, I don't. There's nothing fun. I mean, racing could be fun, but, but driving is just but you'll need boring your... and stressful, and it's just I'm all there. Right. If you live in an urban environment, you may not even know how to get food. You have to just talk to your right, right. Another awesome idea. Just have food, <laughs> of, food appear in your house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, this is one of the, this is what the economic re uh, re reaction to, you know, these ideas of self-driving cars would be: the all kinds of takeout and right. send the car to go pick your dry cleaning up and. Well, the, you know what, the, the idea of this getting to the wrong hands, right? It's actually, the software is actually a small footprint. Yes, very small. The actual algorithms themselves are very, very small. The data is enormous. The complexity is still there. Right. But, the, the, you know, from, we've gone from a world of thousands of engineers programming stuff to a very simple world where... I, I have two slides. Can, can I bring... Yeah, I just, sure, the, the, just yeah. I've had tried to explain it many, many times, and I just... Um, for those of you who, this is, it's only three slides, I'm just going to leave you with this thought. So, in traditional programming, you have a computer and you put a program, you compile it, you put it inside the computer, then you give it inputs and it generates an output. Right. In machine learning, you actually, the output and the input, the output is the data, that's the learning. Right. And then you give that to the computer and the computer generates the program. Mm. And basically, this is machine learning that program then becomes the old-fashioned traditional program. Mm -hmm. So you've actually got rid of, you know, if I go back a little bit here, this is how we do it today. Yep. This is what machine learning is doing. So we're, we're taking all the things we used to do today, we're just giving it data, and it generates, the, the com what's inside the computer now doesn't have to be programmed, it's these very elegant little small algorithms. Right. It generates the program and then you feed it into before. So you've cut an enormous complexity out of the process. But this That's is machine a, learning. But this is a continuous process. Continuous process because the output, the bottom left on the output there, is constantly changing. We're getting billions of bytes every day mm. coming in, which makes the program that gets generated better. The program is dynamic, I guess. Yeah, I read that 2017 will create enough data that in this year alone that's equal to the last 5,000 years of human history. Crazy. And I assume that trend is going up. It must be going up. I mean, between pictures and videos and, 
and uh, you know, it, it's so the uh, wealth of nations. I mean, just and tied think of data. all these. Uh, yeah, and and not only that, I think the value of of, I mean, right now there is a, there is the kind of the haves and the have not in the in the in the business world. Those that have businesses that are collecting data, have an enormous amount of value, versus those that are not, and so that's why it's so important to democratize this data because you will get a. So you will get a concentration of wealth, a concentration of data mm. at the top, and that may not be a good thing for, but it's, uh, it, it, you know, data is, is, it will be the oil of the 21st but th century. But, but think about the closed society where data is not easily accessible versus an open society where there is lots of data. Yeah. Does it suggest that closed societies won't be as competitive in the future? Well, I think so. Look if the internet was a closed thing. Look if the internet was something that you and I could use only and everybody in this room and we left everybody out. There's, 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 you know, we should lean in heavily to making sure that we democratize whatever can be done. I mean, that's a, it's, it's, not, it's not a privacy issue, because that's a different discussion. But it's just the general availability of data so people can invent on it um, is, I think, is super important. And, and at Amazon with AWS, that's one of the ideas, as well as the education and the knowledge. And, uh, that's great. Et so, Wilson, we have about a minute and a half left. We have time for me one or two questions. So, questions. somebody with a microphone right awesome. around. Um. Hi, I'm still confused about voice recognition. It seems like it hasn't been completely resolved. I just bought a Tesla, which has a lot of voice recognition in it, and it doesn't work. But yeah. maybe 85 percent of the time. Well, the uh, and it it. We would agree that there's a long way to go still, but, but you do have to respect that, or you have to recognize how far we've come in a very few. I mean, Alexa has gone from the, you know, these devices that you're surprised when they work to you're surprised when they don't work. And that transition with a device like Alexa has been super fast. I mean, we're, you're almost, and I agree that we're not entirely there, you're almost at the point where you are surprised when it doesn't work. Not, not quite. That's amazing. That's amazing. That, that, that usually takes 20 years. Right. And, so, and the same is going to happen with vision recognition. And so uh, the only, all the technology is there to make voice recognition great. It's just more and more data. We learn. Every time you say something, we don't quite recognize it. We don't, you're not clear. It's a different language. Uh, we don't know the sentences. We don't know the structures. We don't know the metadata. And so uh, every second of the day, as we get uh, new uh, voice and lecture, we're learning to make it better. And I predict it's going to rapidly, you know, with Ale you still can't do, you still can't hold the conversation. It's mostly all these voice devices are still one instruction, you know. What's the time, you know? What was the score of the Packers game? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and, But you can't say, you, you know, so they say, what was the score of the Packers game? And then it says, X, when they say where did they play? Well, Alexa's kind of forgotten already what you were talking about. So <laughs> th these conversational agents are fast and furious, and they will be here. And we're doing a lot of work to try and understand how to do those conversational agents. I mean, uh, uh, it's, you know, conversation's a very broad field. But I do agree that, uh, I do agree that there's a long way to go, and it, uh, but it's amazing how the expectation has moved rapidly since we launched Alexa. To you know, people are starting to get surprised when it doesn't work, and it's almost, it's it's annoying, but the progress is is tremendous. And and there'll be, and I think there'll be many types of voice devices. Not only going to be Alexa. This is a huge field. Many companies will participate in this. Will it be your car? And every every device in the kitchen will be able to talk to you. And, and right. it's going to be a very active. It's, voice is a good use case. Right. I'm sorry, guys. We've run out of time. So questions afterwards. Okay. Thank you.